Hello everyone, before we start this review of Elimination Chamber, I would just like to let you guys know that you can find the link for Sammy for Syria in the description with how the Saudi Arabia government, you know, just kind of is. I didn't want to do this review without uh, shouting out a charity to help somebody who really needs it. So go click the link, donate to Sammy for Syria if you can, and enjoy this review of Elimination Chamber 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, I have prepared a song for you that I hope you will enjoy. Adrenaline in my soul. There was no Cody Rhodes, and they tried to kill Austin Theory. Bel Air is here. Goldberg was choked. Lesnar is out of control. What the fuck is this? What? What? What the fuck is this? It's music. It's music. It's, it's, this is garbage. It's beautiful. Elimination Chamber 2022 has commenced, which means we are full speed on the road to WrestleMania. There's no breaks. There's no roadblocks. And we have to keep the car at 60 miles an hour or it will go boom. I always find these shows before that proper WrestleMania run to be quite interesting to see how we end up getting to where we're going to get with WrestleMania. Because we all know what Vince wants, but how he's going to make us care about it tends to be sort of sus. And boy, uh, did this show have it. This is Extreme League Wrestling. Welcome to our review of Elimination Chamber 2022 from the progressive city of Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Let's get into it. Starting off, we have our pre-show match with Rey Mysterio versus Miz. Uh, this had a weird heel face dynamic sort of a thing with uh, Dominic kind of distracting Miz on the ringside. I understand also that Rey's gear was supposed to be an homage to the flag of Saudi Arabia, but uh, my boy Deadass looks like he's wearing a diaper, and I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, Rey Mysterio ended up picking up the win with Dom, and later on we saw that Miz was talking about how he needs a tag team partner. This is probably going to be Cody Rhodes, even though if only he had a perfectly good tag team partner. At any point, maybe one he has a historic history with. Gosh, that would stink if they just, you know, happened to have released that person. But the world may never know. Also, here's a fun drinking game with WWE. Drink every single time they mention Eddie Guerrero when Rey Mysterio is on your screen. I can guarantee you, you'll be drunk enough to actually like three hours of Monday Night Raw. This gets a Viva La Raza out of 10. Oh, and we cannot forget about this premium live event. Don't say pay-per-view, because it is a premium live event. They will drill that into your mind until you are numb enough to not feel anything anymore. And starting out, we have Roman versus Goldberg. This is pretty much, a, it's a Goldberg match. It's over in like five minutes. I don't know what you want. Uh, and we just see Roman Reigns uh, beat the crap out of a you know, man who's almost 60. Who, mind you, Goldberg looks good, and he's still able to go. He's still Goldberg. But, uh, yeah, this was fine. I also will say this, Roman Reigns is by far the best heel in wrestling right now. I mostly say that because Kenny Omega is not actively wrestling at the moment to heal from injuries. But I love Roman, love the Tribal Chief, love to see where this goes from here. Uh, besides what's happening at Mania, but that's beside the point. Uh, this gets a Borg out of 10. Next up, we have the Women's Elimination Chamber. And I have to say, from the first Saudi show where women are just kind of wrestling in large t-shirts and like jump morph suits, that sort of a thing, uh, the, the gear the women have now, and especially having three women's matches on the card, it really does show that while I'm very pessimistic about the relationship with Saudi Arabia and WWE, they are actively trying to better the representation of women in the country. And I do think WWE is being a very instrumental part of that. So kudos to them because a lot of their gear in this match 
looked really good. Like, for example, Rhea Ripley's gear is just amazing. She should wear that more often. I really do love that look on her. Liv Morgan's gear was really good. I also really like Becky Lynch's gear later on tonight. And also the gear that Ronda and Naomi have later on, just chef's kiss. Love their gear, love their look. Way better than the baggy t-shirts that they made other people wear at other Saudi shows, so good stuff. Overall, this is a pretty good match. Overall, I agree that Bianca should have won, but I don't agree with how it happened. Because overall, Rhea Ripley seems to just be getting the shaft of it. She loses the gauntlet match after starting at number one. She kind of goes the whole chamber match, kind of taking people out. And then Bianca kind of comes in and eliminates her. And while I know this is probably building to a Bianca and Rhea Ripley feud, it kind of just handed everything to Bianca. She's the last person to enter the Rumble. To be fair, she deserves this match with Becky at WrestleMania. She definitely deserves it after that god-awful move that they pulled at SummerSlam. So the right person won. I just didn't really like how it happened. Kind of a waste of Alexa Bliss's, you know, return with all the therapy segments and things like that. So overall, this is fine. I like who won. Uh, I just didn't like how we got there. This is going to get a Lily Wink out of 10. Next up, we have Naomi and Ronda Rousey versus Charlotte Flair and Sonya Deville. And this is just a basic match. It builds Flair and Ronda for WrestleMania. Naomi was great in this match, and it's like, wow, if only you had a great talent like her to carry the women's division whenever the four horsewomen aren't doing things. If only, right? Uh, Naomi and Ronda end up winning, and yeah, this was fine. It was perfectly fine. And that's kind of my thing with a lot of this show is that it's fine, and frankly, there's no, you know, plain mechanical issues or human rights violations happening at the show, at least that we know of. So above all, this is fine. It is fine. It was good. It was fine. This gets a store brand of uh, vanilla ice cream. You know, the one that kind of comes in the tub to where you can kind of taste the glass on. Not, not, not the glass, but like the, 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 the ice is so coarse. It kind of it kind of cuts your tongue a little bit, but it's like five bucks for a big tub of it. And it's the only ice cream your mom's going to buy for your birthday party. Uh, it gets that out of 10 for me. Next up, we have Mad Cat Moss versus Drew McIntyre, but this time it's False Count Anywhere. And I don't care. I don't care. I don't care about this feud. I don't care about the jokes. I, I just don't care about Happy Corbin and Mad Cat Moss and their fucking dad jokes. I don't, I don't care anymore. Oh, but I will say Jesus. I don't understand how Mad Cat Moss completed this match because he took an Alabama slam uh, full force on his head. But Jesus, the fact that he was able to stand after that, kudos to you, sir. All the respect in the world. And you know, during this match, I kept thinking, it's no DQ. Drew, you walk down the ramp with a sword. Whip that thing out. Get the glizzy on him. And you know what he did? He, he took a swipe at Baron Corbin before he won the match and good. You have a sword. It's no DQ. Use it. Uh, above all, for me, uh, this match was fine. And honestly, uh, it gets a pee break out of 10. So go ahead, go up, go pee, go get some popcorn, stretch your legs. You're fine. Go get an overpriced uh, soft pretzel from concessions. That's all you need. All right, and next we have Becky Lynch and Lita for the Raw Women's Championship. And I do have to say, as a wrestling fan of a certain age, I love seeing Lita in there. I love seeing Becky in there. Lita, for a long time, was my favorite female wrestler of all time. And she's still up there for me. But luckily enough, we're able to see how people like Becky Lynch have been able to raise the bar in women's wrestling. Overall, it was a great little nostalgia match. Good warm-up for Becky Lynch before WrestleMania. And yeah, it was good. It gets a good out of 10. That's all I have to say about it. Next, we have the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match. Y'all deadass flew the Viking Raiders out there to get jumped before the match and not even have a match? You deadass flew them out there to just get jumped and that's it. Imagine getting a passport. Imagine getting a passport to show up on TV for 45 seconds and get jumped and go, okay, that's it. That's why we flew you halfway across the world. It's it's so bad. It's so dumb. Why have the match? This could have been done on SmackDown. Save a damn plane ticket. 
you know what? If you're trying to save money by releasing talent, maybe don't buy tickets for people who don't need to be at shows halfway across the world. Just an idea. Screw it, because I'm feeling salty. This gets a Riot Squad out of 10. Now, finally, our main event of this stupendous show. It's stupendous. Are you aware that WrestleMania this year is going to be stupendous? So anyway, uh, our main event is going to be the main chamber. Uh, we are starting off not on the best foot because Seth Rollins does a buckle bomb to Austin Theory through Bobby Lashley's pod. And he ends up leaving due to concussion protocol, which I hope... I mean, I, I don't want Bobby Lashley to actually have a concussion. I hope it isn't a work. I really don't think concussion protocol should go into the storyline, but we're gonna have a new champion and there's a Brock Lesnar standing right there. What do you think is gonna happen? But before we get into all of that, uh, Austin Theory had a death wish during this match and man, he took every bump like a damn pro going through a pod, getting F5'd off of a pod, getting, you know, thrown off of so many things. Um, Austin Theory, are your knees okay? Like, my my guy, like, just because Vince asks you to do something doesn't mean you have to do it. You know that, right? Um, stop. He's already dead. Um, and, and then, of course, you know, Seth Rollins, AJ Styles, Matt Riddle, amazing workers. Brock doesn't end up getting called until the last pod, and Bobby Lashley's pod gets called as, like, the second to last one. He says screw it and just kicks his door open and starts eating people. Just F5s, suplexes, getting everybody out. I did really like the ending sequence with Austin Theory and Brock Lesnar kind of playing like the cat and mouse game, even though we knew Theory was about to die and he did die. Stop. He's already dead. And we have Brock Lesnar as your new WWE champion. Explain to me why this had to happen. Just have him keep, have him keep the belt at Royal Rumble and just do the title versus title. Why do you need the extra steps? I feel like Bobby Lashley looks weaker because of this. Like Bobby Lashley does not look good because of this. And also this is the third black champion that this has happened to with Brock Lesnar. I'm not gonna start that argument, but it seems a little sus. But anyway, yeah, um, we're getting title versus title at Mania. Yay. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how to really feel about it. I know this is what they wanted. I just hate how we got here because this didn't need to happen. You could you could you can have Brock and Roman again just for the universal. Give give other people shit to do WWE. Give them stuff to do. I don't understand why you can't give people things to do. It doesn't have to be title versus title. I get it. You want to combine them both so Roman can be on both shows. Just, just give him, there's other shit you could do. There's other people that could have matches at Mania. So night one's going to be a waste. There's no world title on the line. What's going to be the main event? I don't know because you know, Brock and Roman aren't going out there main event of night one. This gets a, I'm not upset i'm disappointed out of 10 and above all saudi the, the the saudi show was was okay it was fine it doesn't make me forget about all the human rights violations that the saudi arabian government has done to people it doesn't make me forget about gamal Khashoggi. it doesn't make me forget about their their awful ways of treating women it was just fine it was a way to kill a saturday afternoon and you know what? This gets a Sammy for Syria out of 10. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Extreme League Wrestling. Let us know in the comments, what was your favorite match on the card from this wonderful Elimination Chamber in the beautiful progressive city of Jeddah? Um, like, subscribe, go follow us on social media. And until then, guys, be safe, be cool, and support Sammy for Syria. Catch y'all later.